Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in chapter 2 talking about Agile Testing Principles, Practices and Processes and related questions of this chapter. So far we have discussed a few of them and we have few more remaining, remaining to talk about and let's have a look forward to understand that what exactly few of the questions could be to tackle them better in the examination. So for the day, uh, the next question we have is question number 22 and uh, it says uh, in a very straightforward way that when should automated acceptance test be run? Now when you talk about the acceptance test, these are of course the tests which are generally written by the business in order to acknowledge the implementation is done as per their criteria or not and uh, whether the business users find any kind of missing elements in the implementations or if the functionalities are working as expected by the you know expectations of the business now there are a very diplomatic answer to these things because uh, the reason i'm saying diplomatic it totally depends on organizations in the real time and uh, it certainly goes sometime like some organization would say that when we demonstrate at the end of each sprint a customer is acknowledging or probably trying to do those exercises themselves and we do acceptance test in a way at the end of every single sprint. When we talk about the second example, maybe collection of sprints can be considered as a level where we can do acceptance testing, which is set of features put together. We can ask our business to uh, work on it and uh, let us know with the sign off that uh, up to here, everything is working as expected or not. And the third option, which is another generic way, is at the end of the release, because not necessarily the client may do at the end of each sprint or at the end of or between the set of sprints they may only do it at the end of the release once when you finally complete a release and hand it over to the business that's reality but as per the syllabus we say that as soon as we have an integrated system established now that can be any interval so the syllabus talks very generically because the word agile itself is flexible that means they give you the freedom that wherever you think it is best uh, applicable to you, you can go ahead and perform the same. So they have not desiredly defined anything specific that this is the only point where you should do it, otherwise it's considered as waste of time. No, they don't have any such statement written in anywhere in the syllabus. So in that context, wherever it makes sense to the business is the right place to do the acceptance test. So in that context, as per the syllabus, let's have a look what exactly they're trying to say. So we have option A saying before code is checked in into the build. Of course, that's not the right point to do acceptance testing because not even a code is checked in. That means uh, there's nothing done about it. So a developer is working and once he's working on that, he finds it satisfactory. Uh, he or she will check in the code in the repository. Then there will be a build integration which will be happening. And then we will have stabilization and regression checks, etc. to make sure it is stable. And then we can go to the business. So it's too early. To conduct acceptance test and that's where a can be ruled out straightforward b says as often as the continuous integration full system build is created full system built that means at any point of time you have the full system being established now here the full system does not mean the end product here the full system means that something which is evaluatable that means you can go and evaluate it and try to measure the functionalities by using them so looks meaningful but not sure with the C and D's. Let's look at, uh, look at the C. C says during UAT as a replacement for testing by the business users. So that's as per the syllabus too late. That means uh, UAT phase probably will be done at the collection of sprints together. It's not necessary that your project is limited to one release. You may have two or three releases to complete a product. So in that context, it's not necessary that UAT should only be conducted at the end of the release, like three releases. So release one also you can do UAT, you can do, uh, you know, release two also acceptance test and sort of thing. And however, there's a difference between acceptance testing and user acceptance testing, alpha and beta. For that, please go back to the foundation and refer to it in more details that what's the difference between acceptance and user acceptance testing and alpha and beta testing. So C is not the right answer. D, only when the full release is complete. Now that full release talks about again the whole thing. So that's also not uh, the right point to perform it. So the best applicable time as per the given information right now is 
B, which is the right answer as well, that is as often as the continuous integration full system build is created and as far as they are embedded together, you can ask the business to go ahead and perform it and that, pine, that time can be anything in our entire, entire release. Could be collection of sprints, could be at the end of release one, or maybe collection of release two and so on. So it's just that what is best applicable. Let's look at the next question here. We have question number 23, which talks about which of the following is a tester skill that is more important in an agile environment than in a sequential lifecycle model or environment. So I think uh, we had a good topic in the chapter two to talk about how we can differentiate between the skill of a tester between a waterfall or traditional model compared to that of agile methodology. And there were several things to talk about that uh, the skill of a tester will be more of like, you know, manual testing, automation is not so required and being about more of like interactive, presentable, being very dynamic, self-motivated. So there are several principles which differentiate between the way sequential models were practiced and how agile is different from that. And being a tester, you should also be aware of what are your key responsibilities and uh, contributions when it comes to such methodology. And we look forward to understand our needs. So we have four attributes given to us where we need to understand which one is more important for Agile when compared to sequential. So we talk about option A as collaboration, B as manual testing, C as performance testing, D as test case preparation. So let's start from the bottom this time. Test case preparation is common irrespective of any methodology. No matter you're working on sequential, iterative, iterative incremental type of development model, test case preparation is an art or basic need of someone to be called as a test engineer. You don't know what is test case preparation, you are not a test engineer at all, right? C, performance testing is a specialized testing and that could be needed in both the model as well. Any product which has to go through the performance test, we have to perform irrespective of whether it is following waterfall methodology or it is following agile methodology. So it's not dependent on the model which we are following. B, manual testing. Uh, of course, this is something which is common, but if I look at the weightage, uh, waterfall makes use of manual testing more compared to that of agile because agile is almost like 80 to 90% of automation is expected here because of the tight iterations and small tight time boxed sprints. So we expect more to be automation driven people rather than manual testing. So manual is more of sequential, but Agile is more of like automation. So I think we're just left with one option here, but let's discuss that also. The option A says collaboration. And yes, in traditional models, in sequential development models, it's not something to do with the collaboration. The reason is each phase gets completed, then you move to the next one. However, it is equally important even in waterfall model or V model to collaborate on the defects, etc., but not on daily basis. That means when it talks about your day-to-day -day work, you don't really have to collaborate with other stakeholders. Maybe when it comes to fixing a defect or making someone understand about a defect, you collaborate with the developer, but not that collaboration. You may provide only the information, but never talk to the developer. But in Agile, the basic principle is that we have to have face-to-face -face, face -face communication and very, very collaborative team where you don't really uh, need to wait for someone to ask you for help. Rather, you know where exactly your help is going to be useful. So it's that sense of collaborative. And we work in several aspects like create, creation of user stories, writing acceptance criteria, reviewing certain things, co collaborating with the team members to take their work effort and help them to get that done within the timeline given for the sprint and so on. So in that context put together, the right answer here is A, collaboration is one of the specific attributes and characteristics of a test engineer working in the Agile environment. Well, moving on to the next one, and that's question number 24, uh, which asks you what is an important job for Agile tester during the release and iteration planning session. So I think uh, we have discussed again a very specific topic about release and iteration planning, and there we looked into that what is the responsibility and contribution of a test engineer when it comes to the release and iteration planning respectively. So let's look at this. Uh, we have option A so says to report defects. No, it's a planning session. So of course you don't have the scope of reporting a defect at this point of time. 
B says to ensure the appropriate testing tasks are scheduled. Yes, scheduling is a part of planning. So testing specific tasks and work should be scheduled at this point of time, uh, respectively for the releases, respectively for the sprint as well. So at this point of time, a tester can certainly point out if you don't see a timeline defined for when the testing will kick off, when the testing is supposed to get over, what are the you know different activities, what are supposed to happen related to this. So if you don't find your activities being scheduled, you don't find a timeline for that, this is where you can go and contribute and make sure that you have a start date and end date with you to uh, define your timelines. So that could be one important thing which you can do because scheduling is a part of planning. C, to select the testing tools. I think that happens pretty much after the planning. And uh, once you have planned your scope of work, you have the information with you, then selecting the tool can happen certainly after the planning phase. Uh, but you can get to the scope of the use of tools. For example, how much automation we need to do, which type of you know uh, outcomes we need. And once you have the objective and scope defined, then you can go ahead and start selecting the tools for that. So not during the planning, you start selecting the tool, rather you decide on using the tools, right? And D, to suggest process improvements, I think that's the end goal that happens at the end of the process. So say for example, if I'm talking about retrospective, then retrospective happens at the end of the sprint when the process has completed, and then we gather information on lessons learned from all the users to improve our process for the upcoming activity upcoming activities or upcoming processes or projects. So that's not something which happens at the planning phase, rather it's the last activity which happens in the life cycle. So put together, <coughs> uh, the right answer here is B, to ensure the appropriate testing tasks are scheduled and uh, well aware to the testing team and they have a clear cut timeline defined for them. So. Through this particular playlist, we are just not trying to answer the questions, but also trying to educate you with more information what you may probably need to get many other questions right. So I hope you're getting a really good takeaway from this playlist and continue to look forward to the same. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.